Hello everyone and welcome back to the fifth tutorial of this video series and today we're going to be looking at how to configure your web server to be able to relay emails using the PHP mailer library. Okay, so first thing you have to do is you have to log into your client zone. Once you've gained access to your client zone, I can go to hosting. I can go to my domain name. And then click on the website manager. I log into the website manager and I find myself in the C panel where I'm always ready to configure any of my website content. Okay, so before we get started with setting up the PHP mailer library, let's just take a look at what your email accounts are currently capable of. So once you've signed up with a shared Linux web hosting package, you are provided with a certain number of email accounts. So I'm just going to open the email accounts in a new tab and then show you that here I have a couple of email addresses that I've created for my own domain. Okay, and so some of the addresses that I like to create to automate some of the functionality of my website include admin, the web domain name itself. It comes with a system email. I've also a couple of other emails here, such as suggestions, technical, vacancies. You can really create a new email of your own preference. So if you want to create a test email, I'm just gonna say test, and it will automatically assign at lambda.joburg. I'm going to give it a password and then if I click on create, it'll make a new email account for me. This email account then becomes available. Over here I have this test email. I can then go to check emails. It'll take me to this link. I can then open that round cube in a new tab. And now I will be able to send emails manually from inside. You'll see that they automatically included an email in your inbox to be able to configure your email address to receive emails on your desktop client using the IMAP or the POP3 protocol. And you can also see that you will require this port number to be able to relay emails through your web server 465. Okay, so I'm just gonna compose an email to my address to lambda at lambda dot Joburg. I'm just going to call it a test email. This is really the manual way of sending emails. This is not the way that we're going to be doing it. Okay. This is an email body. Okay. If I send that and I log into Lambda, inside of my inbox, I now have this new test email. Okay. But yeah, as I've mentioned, this is not really the way we're going to be automating emails through our web server. What we're really going to be doing is we're going to access the file manager and then we're going to build emails functionality inside of our website okay so from the previous tutorial you'll remember that we've installed this vendor folder over here and we've also looked at the vlucas forward slash php dot env library and that was to be able to hide our sensitive credentials and we're going to also use that to hide our credentials for our email relay script but before we get to do that we have to go offline again and download the php mailer library into our source code so i'm just going to minimize this window and open this website folder over here which already has everything that more or less that, that we're going to need okay let me just drop that onto the visual studio code editor and then in our terminal once again if you don't have the terminal open you can do that by control and then the tilde symbol so to install php mailer on your uh, website content all we're going to do is run the command composer require and then php mailer forward slash php mailer. We're gonna hit return and we're just gonna wait for that to download. Okay, and what you'll see also is that the composer.json and the composer.log files will include the dependencies that we now have installed. Okay, and so you should always keep this with your website file contents to be able to deploy your website easily again okay because you don't want to store these vendor files when for example making a backup you just already have all the required libraries and dependencies installed in these files okay i'm just going to close that i'm going to close that as well the code editor because now we really have everything that we need i'm going to open my filezilla program then i'm going to connect to my server I'm going to site manager when i connect to my server I just have to grant access when entering the public underscore HTML directory. I then just need to replace this vendor file and this composer.json and composer.log files with these new files 
inside of my website folder. I'm going to delete these two as well. And I'm just going to dump the new folders in there. Okay, and so I'm going to close that and I'm going to wait for this to finish. Okay, and once this is completed upload, I can close FileZilla as well. And then I'm just going to open the tab again inside of our website manager and I'm going to reload my page. Let's go back into the public underscore HTML directory. And now we're ready to start sending emails from our website. So I'm going to open the index file. Okay, I'm going to edit that, which will allow me to change some of this code. So for the remainder of this tutorial, we're just going to be altering the index, the PHP file, and we're going to change some of the code that we've previously written over here. And there is some code that we're going to keep. The code, the code that we're going to try and preserve is the error reporting, which I've set to one, which is that I've set them on or true. Um, startup errors are true. And then we also have error underscore reporting the underscore all. Then we're going to require the, the vendor folder and the auto load function inside of the vendor folder okay so that's referring to the current directory and then it's pointing to the exact same directory but it's going one level deeper into the vendor folder and then we're going to have this variable create immutable we're going to load the environment variables and we're going to require those from the environment file and if you can remember from the previous tutorial it was set to the database server name database username database password and database name so all of that i'm going to replace together with this variables here so what I'm replacing this by is the following. Okay, I'm going to set my emails host, which is taken from the environment file. I'm, I'm referring to dollar sign underscore env. That's my environment variable that's in my environment file, which is called email underscore host. I'm referring to the email user, which is the user that we've set up like test user. Okay, we're also referring to the email password, which is contained in my environment folder. Okay, and then this code I don't really need. And then what's happening in this next lines from 21 to 23 is that I'm referring to the classes inside of the PHP mailer library. Okay, and that's under the source folder. And you can go check that it's con contained in there. It's under vendor, PHP mailer, PHP mailer, source exception.php i'm referring to these classes okay and then i'm using those classes by specifying the keyword use and then php mailer php mailer php mailer class as well as the exception class and the smtp class okay and then i'm creating this variable a dollar sign mail which is a new php mailer class as an instantiation of a p mailer class and then i'm also pointing to the smtp debug method and i set that equals to true so the very important thing here is that your authentication details have to be set correctly to be able to send me mails from your web server because if the authentication fails then the smtp relay process will refuse your email because it won't recognize who it's actually coming from okay so i'm also pointing to the is smtp parentheses method to specify that it's an email i'm also pointing to the host and then i'm setting that equals to my email server which is what we have defined up, up here using the environment variables i'm also setting smtp authentication to be equals to true and i'm also setting the username to my email user which is one of the environment variables and then i'm setting the password equals to my e email password which is another environment variable okay so i only have three environment variables here to worry about as compared to a database connection okay so keep that in mind we also have to set the smtp secure equals to ssl and the port to 465 okay and then i'm going to start declaring more variables here I want to set a from name and a from email. That's just who the message is coming from. And you don't know, really have to be specific about this. You can really make up a name and you can really make up an email. This is where you normally see that you get do not reply emails from like automated responses and stuff like that. You would normally find do not reply at whatever.com. Okay, and then we can also point to the set from method. And inside that I specify these two variables from email and then from name. Then I can set to, uh, to who I want to send the email. Here I have declared a variable reply to name and reply to email, which are strings. And once again, I just set them to do not reply. And then we're going to point to the clear reply to's with parentheses method. And we're also going to point to the add reply to, and we pass in those reply to name and email variables that we've created. Okay. We're also going to set the header for our emails as from, and then I'm going to append variable from e underscore email. And that was just declared over here. 
do not reply at Lambda. We're going to also set the reply to in the header. So basically we're building the header. This dot equals just means that I'm still continuing that line, just one down that's in the code. So I'm just breaking it up into two lines of code. However, it's going to appear as the same line in the email. Okay, uh, we're going to set the recipient email address to lambda.joburg at gmail.com, which is my window, which is open over here. Just to show you that I can send to Gmails as well. And then we're going to point to the add address method and pass in the variable recipient email address, which is what I've specified over here. This email address here should really be thought of as provided by the user and then set into the add email add address method when sending an email. Okay, and then I'm just going to declare a new variable body and subject in which I have these two strings. This is an email message. And in the second one, this is a subject. Okay, we can actually add a bit more to the body. I'm just going to make this into an HTML paragraph. And then I'm going to add some style. Just the style I want to add here is some color. And I want to make it red to be visible. Okay, and I'm actually using double quotation marks, which I'm rather going to use inverted commas. So I want to set the style equals to red. Okay. And then I'm going to point to the is HTML method and set that equals to true. I'm also going to point to the subject and append the subject, which is this variable to the subject. And I'm going to point to the body and I'm going to set that equals to this body variable. And then I'm going to point to the send method. And once that happens, the email will deliver to you if no errors have occurred. And then I have this header function in PHP in which I specify where I want to redirect after all those processes have been completed. And I'm just going to send us to youtube.com. You can really send yourself back to your email page or your index page, or whatever you want. And then I'm going to exit the script so that it can stop, just shut down the whole process. Okay. So if I save those changes and I open a lambda.joburg forward slash index.php, or if you just go to lambda.joburg in this case, because that's my index page. It's always going to take me there when I enter the web address. And if I say send, you see that I get this message coming through, which is in red. All right. So that's the message that we just sent to ourselves. Okay. So yeah, that's pretty much how it's going to work. Of course, this is not really the way in which you're going to be utilizing this email functionality. You want to use it to send responses. For example, when somebody has signed up, you want them to authenticate. So I'm not showing you all those things. Those are things that I think you can go and play around with, figure out how you want it to be done in your website, etc. So yeah, those are not things that I want to go into detail too much about. But yeah, I think that concludes it for this tutorial. So I hope that you enjoyed the tutorial and I'll see you in the next one.